Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Now, today we've got um, five of the youth here telling a quick story about one of um, a Bible character they find interesting. Now, the character I'm here to talk to you about is a very interesting character indeed. His name is Mephibosheth. Now, before I introduce you to the character I, I'm here to talk to you about, it's important we go over some quick backstory to give some context of why things happen the way they do in the story. Let's take a step back a few thousand years. Saul's king of Israel, and they're being attacked. He sees the battle is being lost, and takes his life at the sight of his immeasurable loss. Jonathan, Saul's son, died in the battle to a barrage of arrows. In fact, not much of Saul's family actually survives. And the one son of Saul that does survive is killed by some of David's men in hope of favor or a prize or something. Rather, David is infuriated at this and actually has some slice and dice, to put it simply. <laughs> now, you see, sons was not actually the only thing Saul had. He also had grandchildren. One grandchild in particular that survived, in fact, likely his only grandchild that survived, was Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan. One, um, sorry, I'm sure a fair few of you have heard of Mephibosheth before, but I bet you don't know much about him, or frankly, how to pronounce his name properly. You probably heard that he was crippled when he met King David, but I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's um, take a step back and get some backstory on Mephibosheth. It mentions multiple times while talking about him that he's lame or crippled in both feet. As to why, there's only a very brief description, and this is back in 2 Samuel chapter 4 and verse 4, where it says, Jonathan, son of Saul, had a son who was lame in both feet. He was five years old when the news told about Saul and Jonathan came from Jezreel. His nurse picked him up and fled, but as she hurried to leave, he fell and became disabled, and his name was Mephibosheth. Now, this was many years before the main events of the story happened in 2 Samuel chapter 9. By this time of the story, he has grown up with the inability to walk, is now a fully grown adult. Now, stepping outside of Mephibosheth for a moment, King David, now ruler of Israel, is in the city of Jerusalem, and he asks his servant, Ziba, if there's anyone alive from the house of Saul to whom he can show God's kindness. Now, this is a pretty weird thing for a king to ask, really, because what he's doing is he, uh, he's asking if there's anyone related to Saul, the previous king left, most likely looking for male because of the time and setting, meaning that this could be a potential heir or even a current threat to the throne. However, due to David's respect for Saul's family and because of the anointing he received a long time ago from Samuel, he doesn't even consider such things. At the time, he doesn't even know that um, this man is actually lame, only that he wants to show compassion towards Saul's family. It's important to note that um, it's more so Jonathan he really wants to show respect to um, since, you know, they were great friends but um, back before David was on the run. The servant replies, Ziba, saying that there is a man of the house of Saul left. His name is Mephibosheth. He's at the son, uh, he is at the house of Machia, son of Amal, in the town Lodabar, which in Hebrew means in the middle of nowhere. And at that, David asks Ziba to find him immediately. Now, back to Mephibosheth's point of view for a moment, he's probably been scared his whole life something like this would happen. The king asks him to come and he's going to finally kill off the last of Saul's line so there's poss no possible threats to the throne left, right? In any case, you don't exactly decline a king's order, generally worse things happen. And he was brought to David. When he gets there, he bows down before David. Uh, as at this point, he probably wanted to make the best impression possible. I think we'd all be the same if we expected that their first intention, the king of the whole place, is wanting to have us killed. In any case, contrary to what Mithivisheth believes, however, David is very glad to see him there. In fact, he's so happy, he tells Mithivisheth that he will eat with David as if he were one of his own sons. And Ziba previous servant to Saul, is now, along with his 20 servants and 15 sons, put to serve him. So this is 
a pretty prestigious servant of David, and now he's passed him down to Mephibosheth, young Mephibosheth. Now, reasonable question to ask is, did Mephibosheth really deserve this? He's just a man. The only thing that really made him special was that he was the son of Jonathan. So did he really deserve this? Well, sometimes we probably ask a similar question when it comes to us and God. When you think about salvation, do you, we really deserve to be saved? Do we deserve heaven? You know what? Maybe we don't. But God made an eternal promise to all of us that, if you remember back to John 3.16, whomever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen? Amen. 